Of course you can come down here. Just please don't turn on the light. I was quite tart with the last person that turned on the light. Gregory said from the shadows of his basement as Richard Terrence stared down at the poorly lit steps. Well, if this is a bad time, I could always come back, Gregory, Richard said. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Not at all. I'm simply developing film down here, and turning on the lights could spoil an entire afternoon of taking pictures of birds and whatnot. I'm certain if you feel the handrail, you should be able to make it down here and talk with me. Just mind what you touch once you get down here. I've got a lot of uh, tools and whatnots that you could scrape yourself on. I would hate for my dear friends to injure himself at my domicile. Richard hesitated for a middling, examining the steps in front of him. There was just enough light from the hallway to cast a dull glow on the steps at least 12 total, which led to the cold stone floor of Gregory's basement. Grabbing the old wooden handrail, Richard slowly made his way down each step, each one creaking underneath his foot. On the sixth step, it made a large creaking noise, and for a moment, Richard feared that the step could give way underneath him and he'd come crashing down. Oh yes, I should have warned you about that particular step. I usually skip over it whenever I come down here. It's got a little bit of a water rot to it. But I don't believe it's of any danger of falling through. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> oh god, I hope I don't break anything else today. This has been a bad one for me, and falling through a step would just be the icing on the cake. Richard said as he made the rest of the steps down without issue and found himself in the darkened basement of his friend Gregory. Once in the basement, Richard tried to let his eyes adjust, but it was so dark down there that all he could make out was a few silhouettes here and there, what appeared to be some sort of table, some shelving, and clothes hanging across the wall. What little light was down in the basement came from the basement window that was conspicuously covered by what appeared to be a blanket. A few beams of light still seemed to sneak out through the fabric, but not enough to give Richard any sort of discernible view of his surroundings, only silhouettes and shadows. He could see Gregory standing behind a table just in front of the window, apparently he had been working on something, probably his film project. Richard would often see Gregory coming in and out of his house at all hours of the night with his trusty camera. It was always odd, he thought, that he would try and take pictures of birds in the middle of the night, but Richard imagined that he took other pictures as well. Old abandoned buildings, some nightscape pictures, perhaps the stars and the moon, Gregory was always taking pictures for his collection, as he said. So how can I help you, my friend? You sound rather distraught, and that rather ominous comment you made about breaking things is somewhat concerning to me. Yeah, it's Angela and I. We got into a fight earlier in the day about something stupid. I kind of lost my cool. I took off my ring and I threw it into the wall. It, it broke it. Clean in two. I've got the pieces on me right now. I, I don't think Angela noticed because she was storming off. But if she sees it at this point after our fight, she's going to be hella tart with me, let me tell you. So I was curious if you happened to have a soldering iron or anything along those lines. I think you mentioned that you are somewhat of a handyman. Why, yes. Yes, I am. You might say that I'm very good with my hands. I can do magic with them. But, uh, yeah, I have a soldering iron around here somewhere. Let me see if I can find it. 
Gregory said with a chuckle as he begins to fondle about in the darkness of his basement. Richard could hear him rustling through what appeared to be tools and other metallic objects. Richard could hear the clank-clank of metal drawers opening and closing as Gregory rooted through them. Hey, maybe I could uh, help you find it if I would know where to look, Richard said. As he began glancing about the darkened basement, he saw what appeared to be a table next to him as he rested his hand on it. He became aware of a sensation of something thick and sticky on the table as he pulled his hand back, probably motor oil. He pinched the substance between his fingers. They stuck momentarily as he pulled them apart, filling the sticky residue. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, that's all right. I would really rather you not touch anything while you're down here. Uh, never know when you're going to put your hand in a tray of developing film and ruin the entire thing. Gregory quickly responded as he continued to root through yet another drawer. Richard could hear more clanking sounds as he apparently was wrestling through tools and other assorted bric-a-brac. You really would think as much as I use my tools that I would be better to keep them all in their proper place, but <laughs> I kind of get myself worked up into a frenzy whenever I'm processing things down here that I lose track of where I put what. Ha, huh. I hear that, brother, Richard said as he wiped off the sticky residue on his pants leg. It was then that Richard became aware of something. A faint odor. It almost smelled like... mold. No, that wasn't it. It was something else. Something more... rancid. It made Richard feel almost queasy. There was another clank, clank, clank of a drawer being opened up as Gregory rooted through it. Well, consternation. It's not in here either. Where did I put that thing? Ah, I swear, if I had as many soldering irons as I do knives, I would have found it already. It's not really that big of a deal, Gregory. I mean, I could always go down and buy one if I have to. I just thought you might have had one easily accessible. Oh, I, I do, I do, I assure you. Ah, it's just, it's gotta be around here somewhere, amongst all these parts and pieces I've got laying around. Well, I don't want you to put yourself back or anything. Uh, by the way, are you aware of that smell down here? Even as Richard said it, he could sense Gregory stand straight up and stop his search for the soldering iron, as though he had suddenly tensed up. Uh, a smell. <laughs> I, uh, I don't uh, notice anything out of the ordinary down here. Uh, wh what do you mean, a, a smell? Like, you know, how these basements are? They can be quite uh, musty. Richard could sense Gregory making his way around the table to the other side of it, standing just a few feet in front of him. Really? You... You don't notice that, that smell? It's pretty pungent, Greg. I mean, I noticed it pretty quickly whenever I came down here. Really? I, uh, no, I, I don't notice anything. I mean, it, there's, of course, like, always a little bit of an odor down here. I, oh, you know what? Uh, I think a cat crawled into the, uh, the crawl space and died a few weeks ago. You're, you're probably smelling that. I mean, I'm just so used to the smell because I'm... I'm always down here anymore, it seems. Oh, um, if you don't mind me asking, what was the fight between you and Angela about? Richard's thoughts were taken off of the odd smell as he started thinking about his fight earlier with Angela. He was embarrassed to say it, but he had to admit his folly to his friend. It was dumb. We were, uh, we were at a restaurant eating, and it was supposed to be just a quick lunch, and the waitress was kind of coming on to me. I don't think she really 
paid attention to the fact that I was wearing a wedding ring, or maybe she, she didn't care that I was married, but uh, according to Angela, I got a, a little too flirty with her, and of course then she starts letting me have it on the car ride back. It, it seemed to get out of hand as we went. One thing led to another. She started bringing up old slights, or perceived slights, and of course... I had to bring up a few things that she did whenever we first started dating that I probably shouldn't have, you know, involving former lovers. And By the time we got back home, we were both pretty much at each other's throats, so I made my way out of the car. As I was trying to go back to the house, she said that maybe I should just drive back to the restaurants and hook up with the waitress, since I seemed to like blondes and all. I rubbed me wrong, and I pulled off my ring, and I yelled, Yeah, I might just do that. And then I flung it into the wall. Broke right in half when it did. She didn't notice. She just stormed off, slammed the door. I found the ring and ended up here. Man, do I feel like an asshole. I shouldn't have said that to her. Yes, yes, well, you often say the most hurtful things to the ones you love the most. You almost sound like you're speaking from experience, Greg. Had some, uh, exchanges with some special ladies, huh? What can I say? I, I love the ladies, after all, Richard. I love them to death. So what about you? Any, uh... Special lady in your life you want to talk about? I've only seen you have a few girls over to your place here and there. As Richard talked, he noticed once more the clothes hanging on the far wall. It looked like he had coats just hanging there all in a row. A rather odd place to be hanging up one's clothing, but Greg was always a weird one. Oh, me and women. Yes, well... Uh, I've had several short-term relationships. It's the damnedest thing. They rarely last more than a week or two before I end it. <laughs> Look at you, Greg, breaking women's hearts, left and right. So, you're usually the one to end the relationship, huh? What can I say? I love stealing women's hearts. I tend to get rather bored with them. Pretty fast, and, you know, after I'm done with them, it's on to the next conquest. What a surprising thing to say, Richard thought. He never took Gregory as a womanizer. As a matter of fact, he was quite surprised that Greg could even get any sort of women to pay attention to him. So, it seems that this was somewhat of a revelation on both accounts. Well, anyway... I'm certain to find that soldering iron. There's just a few more places it could possibly be. Greg then turned and disappeared back to the darkness where he could be heard rustling around again. Richard heard him clanking around with what appeared to be glasses or possibly mason jars as they clunked together and made a sloshing sound as though they were holding some sort of liquid. Oh, nice, nice. I was wondering where this one went. <laughs> I hate losing a part of my collection. As Gregory kept rustling about the basement, Richard took a few steps about, stretching his legs. As he did, he felt something slap across his face, hard and metallic. Richard lifted his hand up and could feel a chain in between his fingers. He felt something swaying overhead and then realized it was a light hanging in the middle of the basement. I said don't touch the light! Gregory hissed from the shadows. The sudden shift in Gregory's demeanor and the intensity in his voice caused Richard to step backwards. His hand once more fell on the table that was next to him. As it did, however, he felt his hand fall upon something uh, mushy and stiff at the same time, as if it was a sack filled with rotten potatoes that had been mashed up to a pulp. As his hand pushed into it, he could hear an 
audible hissing as though gas was being released. And as the hissing subsided, the entire basement was filled with a putrid smell, far more intense than it was before. Richard felt waves of nausea come over him as he began stuttering, trying to explain himself to his friend. Sorry, sorry, Gregory. I, I wasn't trying to turn on the light. I, I was just curious what that was dangling in front of me. Well, now you know. And I can't have you turning on the light down here. It'll ruin my film, and like I said, if you ruin an afternoon's worth of work, I will be quite tart with you, even if you are my friend. By now, there was no denying the stench in the basement. It was like... Being next to a rancid skunk, there was no way that Gregory could possibly not be aware of this smell. Richard was beginning to feel very uneasy, and suddenly his heart began to pound. He decided that he no longer wanted to be in the basement with his friend, especially after making him angry. Look, uh, Greg, I, I can always just go and buy a soldering iron. I mean, there's, there's no guarantee that it's, it's even going to, to work, and... I said that I was going to find it for you, my friend, and I intend to do that. It's gotta be around here somewhere. There's only a few more places to look, so just be patient, okay? I, I know you're trying to help, Greg, but yeah, I, I feel like I need to just fess up to Angela and apologize to her anyway. I've been down here far too long as is. She'll, she'll start wondering about me. Richard wasn't quite certain why, but he felt it was important to let Gregory know that people would be looking for him soon. Imagine how tart she'll be when she realizes you broke your wedding ring. I assure you, my friend, I know enough about female psychology. I've certainly been able to lure enough of them to my domicile, to know how they work. It'd be better for you to fix the ring first, before showing her what you did. I, uh, yeah, I, I guess so, but I... Uh, seriously, Greg, do you not smell that? I told you, it's a dead cat. I'll figure out how to get it out sometime this week. Even as Greg spoke, Richard could feel a sticky substance over his right hand. He lifted it up to his face and could smell the stench across it, like rotten roadkill that had been baking in the sun for a week. It burned his nostrils, and he felt bile start creeping up the back of his throat, tickling the base of his tongue. Gregory once more returns to seeking out the soldering iron, as he could be heard rustling through Yet another drawer filled with metallic objects. How many drawers filled with metallic objects did he have anyway? Oh, well, here we go. Wait, did you, did you find it? Oh, no, no. I actually found my hand crank screwdriver. <laughs> I misplaced it after a uh, processing that I did a while back. This thing's an antique. I had to do quite a bit of searching through garage sales to find this. I mean, I guess I could use a power drill, but sometimes there's something to be said about being more slow and methodic in your works. Even as Gregory spoke, Richard could feel as though he was about ready to vomit all over the basement floor. He nervously glanced over at the steps leading back up to the light coming from the crack in the basement's door. That's a, a, a strangely um, odd choice of, of words when it comes to um, uh, processing, uh, like you were saying. Gregory chuckled from the darkness. Well, what is a man that is not passionate about his works? What is a man that goes through life without tasting all of the delicious fruits that there are to taste. Right, right, Richard said as he nervously took a couple of steps backwards towards the basement steps. What exactly is it that you process down here be besides film? 
Even as Richard said it, he dreaded to know the answer, and he thought about all the times that he came over to visit his friend, only to find him down in his basement, working on something. He was almost always working on something in the basement during the day. Of course, the only time he ever saw him leave was at night when he went out to take his photographs or, or whenever he would have a woman come over to stay. Oh, I'm a bit of a hobbyist in many things, you understand? I do a little of this, a little of that. Now that Richard was thinking about it, he always saw the women come to Gregory's place. He can't think of a time that he saw them actually leave. Well, I, I'm kind of passionate about a few things myself, like Angela, for one, uh, working on cars whenever I've actually got the time to do so. Richard took another meek step backwards towards the basement steps. He could feel his breath becoming haggard and heavy. He felt the bile welling up in the back of his throat, his stomach churning. The stench was nearly unbearable, and all he could think about was making it up the steps and going outside, just getting out of the basement. Right, very right, Gregory said, as he began wrestling around yet again. If it's not in here, I don't know where it could possibly be. While Gregory had his back to Richard, Richard had decided that he would use this as an opportunity to make egress. He wasn't certain exactly, but he felt this need to get out of the basement. Perhaps it was the stench. Perhaps it was the odd behavior that he had never seen exhibited in his friend before. Richard slowly took another step backwards, hoping that the sound of his shoe hitting the concrete floor when it alerts Greg to his movements. Oh, huh. well, there we go, more needles. I was just about out. I'm glad that I had this extra stash here. This has been pretty profitable for maids to look through my drawers. I should do this more often. Amazing what you can find in the dark. Gregory said as Richard took yet another step backwards towards the basement steps. Once he was at the steps, he would just make a break for it. He would have to apologize to Gregory later for his odd actions, but he just didn't want to be in this basement, not anymore. Ah, is that it? Uh, uh, no, just another staple gun, but I can always use another one of these. You never know when one might give out on you. Richards took yet another step backwards. His heart was beginning to pound. Each beat felt like it was going to propel his heart out of his chest. More empty mason jars? <laughs> you can never have enough of these. Am I right, Richard? Richard? Uh, y yeah, yeah. Mason jars are good for, uh, holding things. Oh, yes. Especially liquid objects. Or for preserving things, I found. Nothing beats them, Gregory said with a slight chuckle under his breath. Richard waited, turn around one more time, and then I'll be at the steps and I can make my way out of here. Have a good vomit outside, probably. I just don't want to be here anymore. Instead of turn back to continue his search, however, Richard could hear Greg walking across the concrete floor, his footsteps drawing nearer and nearer to him. As he began walking into the slight light that was being cast from the basement door, Richard could see Greg standing there. In his right hand, he was holding something. Was that... Oh shit, it was a gun! Angela had always said that she got a creepy vibe from Gregory. And there he was standing there with a gun. The slight lights of the basement cast a sinister glow about his body, like that of a demon wearing a long duster. In Richard's panic, he snapped his arm out, grabbing a hold of the chain that dangled from the light. He gave it a sudden tug, 
The ignition of the light practically blinded Richard as it came on, swaying back and forth as it hung from the ceiling, causing shadows to dance across the basement. It cast its incandescence over Gregory, who was standing there with a look of confused shock across his face. As he stood there, Richard realized that in his right hand was the soldering iron and not a gun. Immediately, Richard regretted what he had done. He had surely ruined his friend's film by turning on the light. Gregory stood there with a blank expression across his face. He slowly lowered the soldering iron to his side. I, uh, I see you found the uh, soldering iron, Greg. Greg didn't respond. He just stood there, staring with a blank-eyed stare. His eyes glazed over. Look, man, I'm sorry that I ruined your film. I... But even as Richard looked over Gregory's shoulder, he could see shelves on the far wall, just underneath the window. On the shelves was an assortment of mason jars, and inside each mason jar was some sort of thick, yellowish liquid. Floating in the liquid in each jar was what appeared to be a human heart, with at least 20 or more jars on the shelves. There were several tables lining the perimeter of the basement. Each one of them had an assortment of tools, knives, blades, box cutters, axes, hammers, drills, screwdrivers, all of them, every last one, covered in either dry or wet blood. What Richard had originally thought was clothes or coats hanging across the walls were the corpses of at least four different women. They were pinned up against the wall by hooks and chains. Some of them had been cut in half with their organs and entrails dangling down to the floor. Others had had their chest pried open and their hearts removed. One poor girl had had her lips cut off and her eyes gouged out. She looked as though she was a jack-o'-lantern with a rictus grin. On the eastern wall was a large bulletin board with countless paper clippings detailing out missing women reports from at least five years back. Richard had actually remembered reading some footnotes about the missing person's case several times while he was eating his cereal and drinking his OJ, not once realizing that the very perpetrator of these crimes was a man that he hardly even knew, really, that had been his neighbor for years. As Richard's mind reeled with the revelation that somebody that he thought was a friend had been a serial killer for so many years, he looked down at his right hand and could see that it was covered in a thick black sludge. His pants were covered in splotches of putrid blood that had been caked on whenever he rubbed it off. He glanced to the table at his right, verifying his suspicions, as he could see the pulpy remains of a woman's upper torso. Her chest had been caved in, and her flesh had been putrefying for some time. Richard could even see the indention where his hand had sunk into her flesh and caused her to excrete a foul bile out of her mouth and stomach. The one remaining eye that the woman had was bulged out of her face as though she had died a most horrific way, her mouth gaping open with broken teeth jutting out in all directions as though she had been bludgeoned to death with a hammer. Hanging on a line across the ceiling were several pictures of developing film. They had been ruined by the light being turned on, though Richard could sell that they were various pictures of women, some of them being taken while they were 
out walking their dogs, at the mall, or even taking a shower. Other pictures seem to show the same women in varying stages of torture, being bound down by chains, being vivisected by scalpels, being bludgeoned about the face and genitals with a hammer. Oh, he did develop pictures down here, but he also did so much more. Well, this is awkward now, isn't it, Richard? Gregory said as he tossed the soldering iron onto the floor. Richard wanted to run. He wanted to escape, but he felt himself frozen in terror. As Gregory reached on to a table, pulling off a rather large, intimidating looking cleaver. Andrew will come looking for me. She'll want to know where I went. You're one of the few people that I ever hang out with after we get in a fight. Oh, I'm certain she will, my friend. I'm going to have to move like I usually do every five years and start another identity. It's a shame, really. I rather liked this neighborhood. The neighbors, for the most part, didn't meddle in my affairs. While Gregory lifted up his right arm, brandishing the blade, he grabbed a hold of the light chain with his left hand. It's a shame, really. You would have been safer in the dark. But now, the darkness is where you'll die. Gregory said as he pulled the chain and the basement went black. Angela Terrence stood at the entrance of the cellar door that leads down into her neighbor's basement. Um, G Gregory, are you down there? Uh, I was curious if I could talk to you. She continued to stare down the twelve steps that led to the basement. She waited several moments before turning to leave, but just as she turned, she heard Gregory call up from the dark. Yes, Mrs. Terrence. I'm down here. I'm working on a few new projects that I just acquired. Oh, yes, your, your little hobbies, I see. Um, have, have you seen Richard by chance? Me and him got into a fight, and I think he's upset with me still. The fight was something stupid anyway. I meant to apologize to him. Hmm, well, I haven't seen him today, Mrs. Terrence. However, if you come down here... Maybe I could give you my counsel on the subject. I know a thing or two about relationships with the opposite sex. Hell, he'll probably show up here eventually anyway. He usually comes around whenever he's having some trouble he'd like to talk about. Oh, well, I, I wouldn't want to be a, a bother or anything if you're in the middle of something, Gregory. Gregory chuckled from the darkness. Oh, no, no. That's quite all right. In fact, I could use the company, Angela. Why don't you come down here and chat with me? Well, I, I suppose if it does burn through some time until my Richard shows back up, I can talk with you for a little bit. Angela said, as she slowly began to descend the creaky steps into the basement. Oh, Angela, mind the sixth step. It's a little bit rotted, and I wouldn't want you to fall through. That's very courteous of you, Gregory. Oh, it's just how I was raised, Angela. After all, being polite gets you far in life. I just have one rule. If you're down here with me, don't turn on the light. I was quite tart with the last person that turned on the light. March 8th, 2016. Sean Parker Storytelling.